Okay, we are now here with Terry Malloy, who was Davros, of course, in the 1980s for Doctor Who. Uh, Terry's been with us twice at Sci-Fi Scabber before and kindly agreed to come online um, and have a chat with our Sci-Fi Scabber online to make up for the lockdown. So first of all, Terry, hello, how are you? I am excellent, thank you. Very good. I have my Daleks sitting by the door to prevent the dogs from getting in. <laughs> How are you coping with the lockdown, sir? Well, hey, I live in the middle of rural Norfolk, so actually self-isolation is a way of life at the best of times. You know, it's, uh, it's no great, you know, great shakes to be, uh, you know, not seeing people for days on end. Um, so in terms of, you know, getting stir crazy about it, no, there's plenty to do around the house. You know, I'm, uh, I've got uh, writing to do, um, bits and pieces to do, so... Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's actually rather nice. You know, the dogs are kind of getting a bit fed up with the walks. You know, I mean, they're so used to getting a walk every couple of days, and now they say, "Oh, please, you know, do we have to have another walk?" Yeah. You know, but um, it is the nature of the beast, really. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it's 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 well, it's been fine, and I've been keeping well and keeping away from things. You know, because I'm I am one of those in that group that is, you know, over 70, has diabetes, has asthma, has a heart condition. So, you know. Yeah, quite a few things to worry about. Yeah. yeah. If I go out, I wear, I, wear a, I wear a face mask and nitrile gloves, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm usually very, very careful about things like that. And, uh, but it's, it, the, the village has a sense of community to it. So everybody shouts at each other now from, you know, six feet apart over, over hedges and things. You know, so it's... Um, well, obviously, we'd rather you're with us in Scarborough, but this is the next well, yeah. So we're well, quite happy to still be talking to you. And um, <laughs> we've got a lot of content tomorrow, and people look forward to watching this little video. Oh, so good. start by talking about before Doctor Who and so on. I've asked the same question to the other actors. Why did you want to act, and what path did you take to get into acting? What was, how, how did it all start for you? Um, well, I, my, my mother was actually on stage. She was actually, she left school, she left home at age 12. Wow. to join a, a, a juvenile troupe um, doing a, she became a dancer mm -hmm. and then she met and worked in variety for oh many many years until she, she married my father in the in the in the 30s um, but still kept contact with the and she, there were other members of the family who were also uh, on the stage as well uh, her twin sisters her younger twin sisters um, they had a, a you know a twin act that they did around and play. so they worked all over the place and she did you know and, and you know dancer singer um, with a lot of the big names of, of variety so I suppose it was kind of in the genes um, but actually I wanted to be a vet that's really what I wanted to do um, um, when I was uh, going through school and uh, it was only when I got my O levels and uh, I've realized I got absolutely no science subjects in fact, it took me three goes to get maths. <laughs> it's not going to work, that is it, you know. Um, <clears throat> but um, so I, I, um, uh, I, I've always been a musician. I, I enjoyed music. I, I, I studied clarinet at school. It was very good. And so um, I, um, I did apply actually to RADA to, 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 for, a, for a place because my father died in 1963. And um, I was just coming up to, you know, uh, leaving school time and what have you. And um, so I applied to RADA and uh, I kind of needed a scholarship because uh, I was living in, my mother was then living in Bournemouth and they were very iffy about grants and stuff for people doing things that weren't universities. And um, so they said, well, yeah, well, we'll pay your fees, but you, you know, you'll have to find your own way, which effectively said, well, you don't unless you get a scholarship. And I didn't get a scholarship. I got offered, offered a place, but I didn't get a scholarship. So that kind of put the kibosh on that. So I went back to them and said, well, I'll, I'll go to Liverpool University and study music and drama up there. And they threw money at me for that. Because in those days, we did actually get given, you know, grants um, in, to enable us to go to, to university. I was the uh, last uh, sort of generation, I think, to get the grants. Really? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a bugbear of mine. I, I really am so cross that the, the people, the, the young people today do not have that ability. Absolutely. Because it's investment in the future of the country, you know. It's just short-sighted. Completely, completely. Completely short-sighted. Anyway, so I went up to university, to Liverpool, uh, in the mid-60s, and basically spent three years playing in a soul band. You know, kind of avoided lectures wherever possible, and um, 
I thought, oh, this is great, you know, and I played all over the place. Uh, we had a big 10-piece soul band, and I, by then I was playing sax. Um, and, uh, yeah, and arranging some of the music. And uh, uh, we, we were covering basically all the soul numbers that there were, uh, plus beginning to write a few things of our own, which were a bit kind of um, blood, sweat and tears orientated with big brass sections and things. And um, it got towards the end of my, my final year, though, was a final year of drama, which I spent basically, you know, working alongside people at the Everyman and the Playhouse and, and um, just seeing how all that worked, you know, being a sort of a kind of a, um, you know, just shadowing a job, you know, shadowing directors and things like that. And it was great. I mean, I probably learned more there than I would have done with three years at RADA, you know apart from, say, horse riding, fencing, and, you know, speaking terribly nicely, yeah. you know, but, um, um, yeah, so I, I came out at the end, and I thought, well, I actually, I was thinking about going into music, but I thought, I'm such a lazy sod, I really am, you know, and I love music, but it's, it's hard, it's not easy, I, I, I'd really have to work really hard to be as good a musician as I'd want to be, I, I mean, uh, you know, not, a session musician, a you know, a, a creator, a writer of stuff, um, not a pop star or anything like that. And um, I thought, oh, you know, actually, acting's dead easy, and there are more days off, so why not? You know. So I kind of I I joined initially a, a children's theatre company down in London, and um, took it from there. And as we say, the rest has fallen into place remarkably um, from from my point of view i mean i've not i've never had a career curve or or dynamic um or you know plan i don't think you can have a career plan in, in acting because it's um it's not a it's not a not a, a linear progression like going into an ordinary job and going up the up the the rungs of the ladder it's more like concentric circles and you're either on this circle or that circle and you just swap around, you know, you're up one day and down the next. Um, uh, so I haven't actively persuaded, pushed anything at all. Um, plus I'm a terribly, I'm terribly shy and a ter terrible pusher. I, you know, if I see a, a director, famous director in the room, I'll walk to the other end of the room. I won't be seen talking to him in case people say, oh, you know, having a word. <laughs> no, 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 well, I want it. it Wants me, you'll find me, you know, and that's it. Um, yeah, so that that was it, really. My my decision was made, and it's been a great decision. Yeah, yeah. I've had, you know, since '68, I've had what forty plus years of, um, you know, uh, fifty. Is it fifty years? Gordon Bennett, I don't know. I'm so old. Um, but anyway, a long time of working and working really fairly constantly uh, early years yeah i mean i did other things like dj in oxford street and uh, drove a black cab in in birmingham and and did so, you know all sorts of clean flats and all that kind of stuff that actors do when they're out of work um but you know really um certainly for the last 30 odd years 30 of 30 30 odd years i've been in relatively constant work you know which in this business is is really quite phenomenal you know and that's been down sorry go on no no carry on please please no i say that's basically in a sense that's down to two programs doctor who is one of them yeah obviously because i came into that in in 1970 uh in uh, 1984 83 83 84 but also the archers on radio 4 which i've been in for 50 years you know, nearly well, forty-five years. I joined there in nineteen seventy-three, and um, and I've been a regular character in the in the program through all those years. And as a result, audio has always been my my forte. I've always done a lot of audio but because it's work before Doctor Who. Then, um, I yeah, I did I did a fair amount. I mean, I. I didn't have an agent and I realised that I ought to have had an agent because I was applying for jobs like I, I Claudius when that was being cast and things and they said oh we're only seeing people through their agents so I thought well I haven't got one hmm. and um, and then I um, by pure chance I was uh, working with a producer at Pebble Mill in Birmingham and uh, he, he said um, he said, I, I put you up for a telly job. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. 
Um, you may hear from them or not, I don't know. It's, um, it's, um, but I was contacted by somebody who said, do you know anybody who could play a good brummy drunk? And you immediately sprang to mind. So I thought, oh, great, thanks for that, Bab, you know, <laughs> me, drunk, yeah, 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 all right, go on then. Um, and so I got this call from this company called Opix Films, and they said, well, we're, we're trying to match people up for this, um, this project we're going to do doing in Spain, which is basically three guys on holiday. And uh, we want a Brummy, uh, we've got a couple of Brummies. To, to one, the main character is a Brummy, and there's another one who has to be a drunk. And then there's a guy from, from up north, you know. And I said, oh, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm originally a Geordie, but I've lived in Birmingham, you know, so many years. I was, you know, like a naturalised Brummie, really. And um, so I said, well, you know, we're seeing people on such and such a day. I said, well, uh, I'm in studio doing a, a telly, um, which I was. Uh, I said, be free uh, you know, the, after the weekend. And they said, well, okay, well, we'll see. We have to run it now to get these things in place. And um, uh, so come after the weekend, I, I got in touch with them again. They said, oh, sorry, we had to make a decision. We've gone with somebody. And I said, oh, fine, okay. And um, then about a month later, I uh, got a, I was down in London. I was actually, into, I was talking to somebody about uh, reprising a play down at the Greenwich Theatre about a brass band, um, which I'd, I'd done in Leicester. And I got a call from the stage, stage door saying, um, somebody's been on to you, your, your wife has been on to you saying somebody was ringing for you and can you ring them back? And it was Opix Films. Okay. And they said, oh, listen, um, we're sorry about the job, you know, which we're, you know, we, were, we had you up for, but uh, there's plenty more stuff coming up and we'd really like to meet with you if, if we can, you know, if you're around any time. So, well, I'm actually in Greenwich at the moment. I said, oh, great, well, come and have a come and have a meal with us, you know, uh, have, have lunch. So they took me out to lunch, got me very well oiled and talking about this and that and the other. And when are you doing that? You know, and I was saying, oh, I'm doing this. And, and yeah, how tall are you? And, oh, yeah, well, okay. And um, I thought, oh, yeah, fine. Well, they said, sorry about the, the, the other job, um, but never mind. I'm sure there'll be something else in the future. I said, got on the train, went back home, <clears throat> walked in the front door, uh, and my wife was there with a suitcase and my passport and saying, right, You've got 20 minutes to turn around, get up to Manchester, because you start work on the job that originally you thought you hadn't got. And it's actually six weeks filming in Spain with Jasper Carrot. Wow, okay. Okay, right, yeah, so that was it. <laughs> <laughs> so, six weeks in Spain, I was down in, in southern Spain, uh, doing this um, thing that Jasper had put together with London Weekend Television and Opix Films. Um, about three guys on holiday. It was meant to be, he, he did a thing with the Tampa Bay Rowdies where he, they had, uh, he'd, in, he'd done a documentary about the club and had input with various people. And this time he wanted to do the same with the glitterati of Estepona and, and Marbella, you know, the, the, and the crooks and things like that down there on the Costa del Sol. And um, have it wrapped around these three guys who were on holiday. Um, because he thought that might be fun and um, you know there wasn't a script as such we were going to kind of make it up as we went so we turned up there and um, uh, started doing all this stuff and we, we hadn't a clue what we were doing basically we, you know, it was me playing Kevin from Birmingham you know and everywhere Kevin went, went he had to have a bar there was always a bar where he was you know so you know we, we, at the one point we did a football match in the middle of a totally open open plain you know between the English tourists and the Spanish waiters. And Kevin was in goal and he had a little cocktail bar by the side with the Spanish waiter serving in cocktails, uh, which strangely enough seemed to be real cocktails. I don't remember much about the match. I do remember being taken down from hanging on the crossbar by Carrot at some point saying, you know, what's he doing, Kevin? <laughs> well, I don't know, I was just here, you know. Um, <clears throat> so we basically made this up and came back and think, well, right, okay. Um, the, the interviews he'd done hadn't gone very well. So they were suddenly kind of cobbled together a, an hour long comedy program out of, out of all these things, which was very bizarre. I think it only went out once. It was called Carrot Del Sol. If anybody ever saw it, I don't know. I don't, um, I mean, I, I remember Jessica was the media when I was at primary school. In yeah, yeah. Is, um, but I didn't, I mean, that must have just been before sort of, I was sort of, you know, watching the sort of thing and sort of, yeah. 